welcome back. We've got another lesson for you today, and this one is on, we're going to do a little series on most used adjectives. Okay, so these are adjectives, and they're used a lot, okay, in everyday language in, uh, in Palestine, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, really all over the Arab world, you'll find these pretty much, most of them are used. So let's look at the first one. <clears throat> this one is Mabsut. All right, Mabsut. So Mabsut means uh, it's found only in Amiyya. Uh, it's like Sa'id in Fusha, which means happy. Okay, so he is happy. All right, Mabsut, happy. And the plural is Mabsutin. So a little trick for you, if you're learning any noun or adjective, always know what it is in the plural. And the way I do that is I put I put the plural bain qawsain. So here though, if you'll notice, it just has in. Well, for people, when you're describing people, the plural in is used most often. So if it's a sound plural, it'll be written like this. Hmm? Alright, here we go. So it'd be like this. Whoa. I'm having trouble writing today. <laughs> here we go. It is mob. All right, now, uh, this is a scene, traditional scene, but in handwriting, we just put a longer line. So it'd be like this, mab, sud, like that, all right? And then, because of the plural, it would be written as such, all right? So it'd be mab, sud, mab, sultin. There it is, mab, sultin, all right? That's the plural, but, to make it easier for most students, they have to write the word again. If it is a sound plural and it has in on the end, just put it being kausin between these two uh, parentheses. So, mabsud means happy. Happy. That's it. Mabsud. Happy. And it's used in uh, greetings. So, if someone says, How are you? Um, we don't normally say it in English, like, How are you? Happy. You know, we don't always really say that. But in Arabic, yes, it's used a lot. Mabsud. Kif halak, mabsud. If you're a girl, mabsud ta. Mabsud ta. Notice the ta brings out a heavier sound. It's like your tongue is heavy. So if you're a girl, you're going to say mabsud ta. Mabsud ta. All right? Happy. All right? Taban is the next one. Taban. Now, taban is used for people. It's also used for things. Okay, but here's the meaning of it for people. The standard meaning is tired. Tired, okay? But really, in most daily usage, we don't use it for this meaning, tired. I mean, yeah, it's tired, but from the sense of being like a sick tired, you know? So basically, it's more like uh, feels sick. أنا تعبان اليوم كيف حالك اليوم تعبان صدقني تعبان تعبان could mean mostly it's gonna mean like uh, you feel sick like maybe you're gonna get a uh, cold you're gonna get uh, you're feeling a little ill that's what it means feel sick or feeling sick all right تعبان now when we use it for things that could also be tired okay it could be tired like you stayed up all night and you you're feeling really uh, really bad, you say taban, all right, tired. But mostly, if you want to say you're tired, like sleepy tired, it would be another adjective uh, that we're not going to have today. But that one's just if you want to know, nasan. But this one's taban, feel sick. All right. Another way that you could use this is for adjectives. So if you have, let's say, a car, all right, is sayara. Okay, the sayara, we would say, Tabani. The sayara, Tabani. What does that mean? The car is in terrible shape. <laughs> the car is in bad shape. The car looks bad. Basically, it means also looks bad. Okay, it looks bad. And this, if you're getting the hang of this, this is for people and things. Looks bad. So if somebody comes in, they're kind of sick, then say, Taban, you know, they feel bad or they could look be looking bad. Taban. 
All right. So you could say Sayara Tabani, which means this car is beat up. It's it's not looking good. It needs to be, you know, fixed or something. Tabani. Also, you could say, for example, you could say. Uh, You could say tufaha uh, or um, let's just go with bait. Uh, yani, uh, we could say beto. All right, beto taban. Beto taban. Beto taban just means his house looks terrible, looks bad. It's not been taken care of. It needs uh, work on the outside. You know, it needs to be uh, done better. All right, taban, beto taban. Or if you're looking for fruit or something like that, you can say, oh, you know, this, uh, this, these onions are taban. You know, this one basal taban means it is looking bad. Do you have some good looking fruit? Because this is looking bad. Taban. Or you could say the bananas, el moz, taban. All right. So. The next one is la'im. La'im, by the way, ta'ban, the plural is ta'banin. Ta'banin. All right? All right, so la'im is the next one, though. La'im, which takes the same sound plural, la'imin. This one is more like somebody, basically the word means mean, and it's used for people. Okay, only for people, I think. And it's used like he's mean or he's a jerk. You know, somebody who's mean, they treat people badly uh, and they're just self-centered and they treat people badly is la'im. That's the thought behind it. And you say, Hadol al-Nas la'imin. They are la'imin. They're mean. For a girl, la'ima. All right, la'ima. So here, the next one is sab, and this one also takes the same sound plural, saibin. All right, sab. If we say has shucks, sab, ho shucks sab. Yani sab means he is difficult to deal with. He's a difficult person. That's basically what it means. Difficult, difficult person. Okay. Difficult person. It's hard to deal with this person. If you want to get something for this person, you have to really, uh, you know, work hard. And even then, it's not guaranteed because he's a difficult person to deal with. If it's a girl, Saba. Saba. Yeah, any Saba. All right. So, Saibin for, for plural. This, though, drop my pen. This is always used for people. Uh, and things. So, if you're talking about a thing, it takes the same meaning. Difficult. So I put that there. We don't need it. Difficult meaning the person is. I mean, the thing that you're asking is difficult. Not only is it used in this sense, but it's also impossible. So it's not really just difficult. It is impossible. For example, if someone comes up to you and says, uh, "I need you to be here tomorrow at 9 a.m." All right. Then they say, "Sab." If they say "sab," basically what they're saying to you is, "I'm too afraid or I'm too shy to tell you out of respect for you." No. So I'm going to say "difficult," which basically means it's impossible. <laughs> That's what they mean. It's impossible. Sab. All right. Sab. Uh, give me a better price. Sab. Sab. Give me a better price. Sab. All right. So things and people means difficult. Or impossible. Okay, impossible. All right. Now, here, this is an acronym. Not an acronym. Antonym. Thank you. An antonym. We want to get our get our uh, syntax mixed up here. All right. An antonym meaning easy. All right. Easy or simple. Okay, and it's used for people and things. So it's basically in the same way as sab. This is an easy person to deal with. Like uh, say demo khafif, demo khafif, meaning that his literally means his blood is light. <laughs> means 
He's easy to get along with, easy to deal with. But sahl means more um, how you how you can deal with the person, like uh, like in a business relationship or in a, any kind of uh, talking and stuff. He's easy person to deal with. All right. Also, it means simple for things. Okay, simple. Like uh, if somebody uh, talks about a test, al-imtihan kan sahl, yani kan sahl, would mean it is easy. It's easy test. All right. Or the um, the directions are sahl, just like we would say sahle, you know. And then also it takes the plural sahlin. So there you go. Five great adjectives that you definitely should know. And we'll have some more coming up for you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.